This time on Film Ranker, we are counting down the top 10 Dark Horse films. While Marvel and DC have been the big boys in the world of comic book movies, indie publisher Dark Horse has been quietly creating quite its own list of almost 20 films based on their comics. While there are plenty of bad ones, Son of the Mask, AVP, Barbed Wire, there are also a few gems. So let's take a look at the top 10. Number 10, 300 Rise of an Empire. Zack Snyder doesn't return for the side quill based on Athenians and sea battles, and unfortunately the style does take a nosedive because of it. Instead of the eternal golden hour, we get more lens flare than a basket of J.J. Abrams. On the plus side, what you can see of the ship battles is cool, Plus, we get to see the best character from the best season of Skins doing some swashbuckling. And Eva Green steals the show as the leader of the baddies. Number 9. Time Cop. This was a fun movie back in 1994, and it's kind of still a fun movie, but it has not aged particularly well. There are a lot more warehouses than you remember, and a lot less actual time travel. Really, everything outside of the Wild West cold open looks an awful lot like the early 1990s. That said, I can still happily watch Jean-Claude Van Damme against Andy Garcia in pretty much anything. Number 8. The Mask. This movie is better than you remember. It was the weakest of Jim Carrey's breakout year movies, but that isn't to say that it's bad. There are some fun, goofy moments in the police song and dance and the Copacabana, and there's a smidge of menace in the Mask character that mostly keeps him from being too much, though sometimes he's still a bit too much. Also, Cameron Diaz is a clear star in her first acting role. Number 7. Mystery Men. This movie is still the best of the small genre of uh, superhero movies about terrible superheroes. Everyone in this all-star cast delivers, and it manages to be both a genuinely funny comedy and a legitimately good superhero movie without hurting either half of that puzzle. Also, this is the role that Greg Kinnear was born to play. Number six, Tank Girl. A true cult classic with style out the wazoo. The weirdness is not for everyone, but there is some real joy in the comic book panel framing and the crazy color palette that captures at least some of the spirit of the comic. Lori Petty shines in the role that she was born to play, and Malcolm McDowell is great as the head of the evil water and power. You do need to forgive some overly 90s film style, and the iced tea kangaroos take a little bit of getting used to, but... This movie's worth it, if only for the soundtrack alone. Number 5. 300. This is style over substance, but holy cow is that style ever cool. Zack Snyder uses all of the tricks in his toolbox. Eternal Golden Hour, speed scaling, slow-mo blood. It's gorgeous. Story-wise, it's more or less just one battle of 300 buff topless dudes against increasingly tough odds and increasingly weird enemies. That said, it stays entertaining throughout. Zack ramps it up just enough with each wave and gives us just enough slivers of story to keep us interested all the way through. Number four, American Splendor. This is a very different kind of comic book movie. The bio of Harvey P. Carr is as dark as it is imaginative. Paul Giamatti is phenomenal as the lead, but it's really the direction that elevates it. All of the fourth wall breaking and the illustrations and the weirdness, it all comes together to create a style that reflects its substance perfectly. Number three, Hellboy 2, The Golden Army. Yeah, this is weaker than the original, but it is still pretty rad. Johan Kraus is a welcome addition, and having more Abe Sapien is pretty great, but the plot revolving around the twins doesn't work quite as well as the plot in the first. The set pieces are fantastic, though. 
especially the goblin market and the forest spirit fight. This is a real showcase of what would go on to be Guillermo del Toro's signature style. Number two, Sin City. This is maybe the most divisive film on a list packed with divisive films. The noir dialogue, the comic book visuals, and the anthology format are not for everyone, but if you buy into Frank Miller's weird ultraviolet world, it is a heck of a ride. Amazingly, all three core stories are equally interesting, and the star-studded lineup kills it from top to bottom, especially Mickey Rourke, who started his comeback with this film. Number one, Hellboy, the original. The most surprising thing about this movie, based on a comic about a demon fighting Nazis, is the amount of heart that it has. Really, it's a complex love story first, and an action movie about fighting monsters, Nazis, and Rasputin second. Del Toro gets that the characters need to matter before the story does. He also gets that we want to see rad monsters, and we want to see those monsters get blown up. He delivers on all fronts. And that wraps up another list. Thanks for listening. Maybe add your own list to the comments or go check out the page for Oodles More videos or subscribe for the Oodles More to Come or just type the word Oodles into the search bar and see what happens. See you next time.